Um, we have a quorum. Okay, okay. Well, it's uh, five o'clock. I'm gonna call the meeting of Middleton Plan Commission to, um, oh, well, I mean, it's seven o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to call the meeting of Milton Plan Commission for April 13, 2021 to order. And uh, Abby, the first item is the roll call. Bruce? Mm -hmm. I did not see Randy on the call yet. So we can pay attention to see if he okay. joins us. Um, Murray? Present. Paulson? Present. Ramsey? I believe Ramsey is still at the License and Ordinance Committee meeting. Okay. Schaefer? Here. Slavish? Here. And Brar is present. We have yeah. five of seven. Okay, so the first item is the approval of the minutes. I move we approve as submitted. Slavish, second. Okay, any changes or anything else? Okay, so the motion by Commissioner Schaefer. John, John Schaefer and second by Mike Slavish. All those in favor of the motion to approve the minutes say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Now the first item on the agenda is the public he hearing that the agenda item number one, that is the general implementation plan to set a public hearing date for rezoning Newcomb resident residential development 1312 John Q. Hammonds Drive. So yep. I make a motion to set the public hearing on Tuesday 5-11 at 7 p.m. Ms. Murray, I'll second that motion. Okay, any questions or comments or discussion now? Um, I was just gonna apologize because I thought that the title that I included there was a little bit misleading. It sort of looked like the GIP was being reviewed tonight, but actually tonight is just to set the hearing. And then the second thing I wanted to note is I received an email from Commissioner Paulson um, regarding the specificity of the application materials, specifically that um, the materials mention five-story multifamily building, but do not mention the total number of units. Um, and he provided um, some thoughts about that in terms of how we notice the public hearing. Um, and so I'm gonna check with Mark as our zoning administrator to make a determination as to whether we would need to get from the applicant the total number of units in order to, um, to denote the density and intensity of the use that's being proposed. Um, I don't see it as being an issue. We can get that information before we send the hearing notice out. Okay, so is that okay with all the commissioners? Yes. 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 Okay, so the motion is to set a public hearing of May 11th at 7 p.m. for a GIP um, of Newcomb Residential Development on 13 to our John Key Women's Drive. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. I, item number two is the um, specific implementation plan modification for sign design review of I3 product development, 2700 Pleasant View Road. I looked at this and it really looks uh, the scheme and the colors and looks very nice. I think it's really well done. And I also read the, the, the comments by the staff and that looks good too. I actually make a motion to approve. I'll second that motion, Schaefer. Okay. And is that okay. subject to just a landscaping plan for the plantings around the base of the sign? Oh, absolutely, yes, that is included. Thank you. 
Any questions or comments? I actually like it. It's really well done. And I'm also happy that this company is coming to Middleton. So, okay, if there are no further questions or comments, all those in favor of the motion to for the sign for I3 product development say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. So the next item is uh, um, sign design review for Hidden Cave Side 2500 Pleasant View Road number one or two. Mayor, I apologize. It looks like we had a numbering issue. Oh, um, okay. So there, we skipped a number. So we're actually on the sign design review for the Poke oh, box. Okay, okay, apologize. Okay, so we are on item number two here. SIP modification for sign design review for Polk Bar 7693 Ellenwood Avenue. It looks like a nice little sign there. <laughs> so need a motion to approve. This is Murray. I'll make a motion to approve the sign. Slavish will second. Okay, so the motion by Commissioner Jennifer Murray and second by Commissioner Mike Slavish. There isn't really too much here. So, <laughs> any questions or comments or anything else? Looks like a nice color scheme. So, all those in favor of the motion to approve the sign for Pork Bar Hawaiian Cuisine say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. Okay, now we are on to the next item number three. Sign design review for Hidden Cave Side Rate 2500 Pleasant View Road number 102. Okay, so, so we Sorry, Sorry. Mayor. this is all that the um, applicant has submitted, but he said it's going to be going on these existing awnings that are on the um, property. And so it's just replacing a sign that's currently there. Okay. Wait, can I, I'm sorry. Do you say on the awning or on the building? Um, it's like, it's kind of an awning, but they're like more solid than just kind of like the, the typical um, like kind of umbrella-like awning. Um, I believe they're like more metal surfacing. Yeah. Um, so it, it is technically attached <laughs> to the building, but more permanent. I'm just trying to remember, do we normally do signs on awnings or only on buildings? Um, we do have awning signs. Okay. Um, and yeah, the building has two other awnings as well. And they, they have similar signage. Um, and um, the applicant Walker family said that you know, it, it's going to be following all the other signage on it. Yeah, if, if you go downtown and the T wall stuff, almost every store has an awning with a sign on the awning. So, yeah. Any further questions or comments? Otherwise, you need a motion to approve. Seems like a pretty simple sign. Shaper so. moves approval. Okay, I need a second. I'll, I'll second, Paulson. Okay, so the motion to approve by Commissioner. John Schaefer and second by Commissioner Kurt Paulson. Any further question or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion to approve the sign for Hidden Cave side re say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. We are on to the next item now, which is the sign. What is going on here? The outdoor patio. Okay, so design, design is for outdoor patio, hidden cave side tree, 2500 Pleasant View Road, number one or two. So there seem to be some issues here. So. Yeah, so this is, it's for the same property as the, the previous agenda item, but they want to add an outdoor patio um, and it's going to be right behind the building. And um, 
right here is the site plan. And there's um, like a bike path that runs behind the property. And then there's this kind of like, um, like drop off area. Um, and this is where the property will be. Um, and the applicant Walker Fanning is here and he has a camera so he can speak to the project. Hmm. Daphne, yeah, can so we... hi. Oh, I'm go ahead. I'm Walker Fanning. If I just may comment just for a second on the uh, <clears throat> the recommendation, I looked at the recommendation and I I think it's a good idea to make it a little bit more permanent. Um, just the two sides of it. I have the landlord who wants it to be less permanent so that he can do the lawn maintenance, and then the city wants it to be a little bit more permanent uh, for people's safety. So I think what the best option is going forward is. I could put in some uh, tea stakes that come out about four feet out of the ground. And I there's like some snow fencing that's made out of wood. They typically have them by the lake. I, it's on a roll. I can roll that around. That'll create a more permanent like barrier that'll just be connected to these posts in the ground by a twist tie, by a few twist ties. And then that way weekly, I can kind of take the fencing down so that he can do the lawn maintenance and leave the poles up. And then I can put the fencing back up uh, so that the patio can, uh, when the patio is in use in that way, it creates a, a more of a permanent barrier that I think satisfies the recommendation a little bit more than what I previously had planned. Okay. <clears throat> if I understood. Go ahead. Yeah, sorry. If I understood the recommendation, the recommendation was to provide some screening between the blacktop and the seating area. Um, did, was there any discussion or thought about providing some buffer or barrier between the bike path and the seating area? Um, I think for... Um, uh, this sorry, would go do ahead. Both, it would be all the way around to satisfy both sides. Yeah, and my, my thought, Randy, was um, for the recommendation was since there would be more like vehicle traffic along this area, um, we wanted a more permanent buffer. Um, and since the blacktop is more like bike traffic and joggers and walkers, um, I didn't see that as, as a big of an, a safety issue, just um, <clears throat> the vehicle traffic here. Okay, any other questions or comments? Yeah, Daphne, do you mind um, showing the context photos that were included? And I'm just wondering if you can show us on that context photo where this would be. Because um, yeah, if I so read it right, it's going to be in between those, that kind of utility and that big tree. Right, yeah, so it's just going to be right between these two. And so all we are approving is basically some um, picnic tables on the grass, right? There's not going to be any kind of permanent hardscaping or any sort of facility there? Uh, I believe no. Um, Walker, if you want to clarify that. Yeah, so there, there's not going to be any, you know, hard surfacing or anything, just picnic tables. And, and that's why I think we're comfortable approving it because... So uh, what we're... A permanent facility with, you know, that close to those kind of uh, utilities and then the, um, the screen. I mean, it's just not, right? It's not the most attractive area for an outside seating for a normal uh, sort of facility because it's it's so industrial and those, uh, I'm trying to point on the screen, but I realize you can't see my cursor. The, the utility uh, would not be screened or shielded, right? Uh, yes, as the current uh, the, the current plan is to just have it with the with the snow fencing um, and more on a temporary basis. Um, essentially, uh, we have a low capacity just due to budget constraints uh, for not putting in the second bathroom immediately, uh, which we plan to put in the second bathroom in November. So it's really just to help us get through this summer and then we plan to install the second bathroom which will allow our capacity to go up and uh, then we won't really need the uh, outdoor uh, seating uh, 
as much as we do this summer. Yeah, as Commissioner Schaefer, I think it's it's a good idea. And, and I think that the space is nice. I'm not even sure you need to block off all of the driveway from the picnic area. It's really, you just don't want bikers coming along that path and seeing this as a place that they can stop and sort of sit down. So it's, um, you know, I, I think it's great. People want to be outside and there you go. So, so I, as long as you, to me, have a boundary blocking the bike path from the grass area so it becomes clear there's a distinction. I'm comfortable. Yeah. This is Marie. Um, I have a question. Uh, is there, um, in terms of the property line, I see it's just a few feet between this area and the bike path. Is the city, um, is the, is the bike path plowed in the winter or what's the maintenance of this area just overall with the bike path? I'm just curious over the entire year. The bike path is plowed in the winter. I don't know what main maintenance is required during the warmer months um, aside from, you know, patching and eventual replacement of the path. I okay. think that the property, the nearby property owners cut the grass up to the path. Okay. Kind of like we mow our terraces in residential areas. Okay. And um, is, just out of curiosity, is there access from this patio area into the back of the building, into the structure? Do they, do you have to go all the way around to the front of the building to, to sort of order and then go into the back patio space? Uh, yes, there'll be an entrance into the rear of the building. We have a sweet uh, door, uh, basically where you see that first, where, where the roof down spout arrow kind of points uh, okay. below your cursor. Um, there's an entrance there. Okay. Um, just a comment, we may want to think about um, a seasonal use for this approval, just in case there's some issue with you know snow i know that that we can't i guess walker are you planning to use it in the winter or just in summer no no this would be it would be late spring uh to early fall usage so by november it would be put away okay all right thank you Okay, next one is Randy Bruce and then Kurt Fossil. Um, I, I think the, that uh, those are good suggestions. I think uh, having just a buffer along the, at the bike path side is, is what I would, in, would think would be the, you know, the necessity. And then I do like the idea of maybe making this a, uh, uh, a seasonal approval only or, or maybe uh, just try it out for this summer and before we uh, extend it for, you know, uh, into the future. I, I just like to see how it, how it plays out and how, how uh, you know, if there's any conflicts with the bike path and so forth. I think I like that idea, Randy. So next one is Kurt Paulson. Yeah, I was gonna ask for staff. Um, we approved a conditional use on this property. Was the conditional use for the cidery or for the outdoor kind of tasting room? Do you remember what the conditional use was? It was for the tasting room. Um, okay, for the tasting like room. A retail kind of use. Yeah. So in some ways, this is ancillary to that. So it would be covered by the conditional use permit. I'm just not sure we can attach a seasonality to a design review. Um, well, isn't, isn't outdoor seating a conditional use or not? Um, no, in, when outdoor seating occurs on public property, we require a sidewalk cafe permit, but I don't recall outdoor seating in this district being a conditional use. Okay. And I think since what he's proposing is just basically temporary structures of, of um, picnic tables, right? If he wanted to do anything more permanent, he'd have to come back in next year or a year later for design review, or if it's 
a more permanent structure would have to be a probably an additional conditional use permit. Yeah, I, I'm comfortable. I don't I don't see I'm going to go here in the middle of December and want to yeah. sit outside while I'm tasting this cider. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, any further question? Otherwise, I need a motion to approve. And and then just we didn't we didn't confirm with staff. The uh, snow fence he's proposing, is that acceptable to staff as a barrier? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Um, as long as, you know, it is a more solid structure, so I think it would be fine. There should be something looking nice, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if, if I may, it, it's basically like uh, four foot wooden slats. They're on a big roll. So I can kind of roll it around the, the, the the post that I'm putting in. So it will create a barrier and it'll it'll look nice because it has like the wood to it. Um, so, it so it'll be more substantial than just the rope that I was proposing initially. Well, I trust also that if it doesn't look nice, your customers aren't gonna go there anyway. So I presume you'll <laughs> find it out. So th this is Murray. I guess what I would recommend is a bit more substantial um, otherwise, I'm a little bit questioning why we would approve it somewhat in terms of its temperance. Um, so I'm wondering if uh, your landlord might might uh, allow a more permanent post so that your fencing could go around the post and that, that would be a bit stronger if if um, someone veered off the path into, the, into your fencing. Um, primarily, that's why. I, I guess I'm, you know, I'm not going to argue with, you know, a steel, a, a steel piece uh, there, but, but I also feel like um, it may not support a bike, you know, exiting that area, and it may be a safety issue. So I'm just a I just want to express that concern in the point mm -hmm. tonight. Sure, and and if I may, Jen, um, the snow fencing around the T post, um, it's used to, uh, you know, stop snow drift. So it does have to be able to take a certain amount of pressure onto the fence. Um, so it's it's it shouldn't be like a rinky dink solution. It it should provide some support uh, there. Um, so so if that helps. So, uh, <clears throat> what did the other commissioners think? I, I'm just curious. Yeah. Jen, what do you, Jen? Okay, Jen I I I, uh, I kind of a, agree with you that I'm afraid that if this is our only review of that, and um, and the fencing either uh, you know is up for uh, a, a longer period of time and it it isn't uh, effective or not attractive. Or, or not safe. More, more, most importantly, if it's not safe, I, I, I'm a little concerned. I, when I first looked out there, I was wondering if we could just get a little section of uh, split rail fence or something there. It wouldn't have to be much, just enough to designate the separation of the of the uses. Um, and in yeah, ahead, to my sorry. previous comments. Um, you know, I think we can attach conditions to design review, and certainly if the applicant is is amenable to it, we could uh, make the design review kind of uh, subject to conditions, so that if there's safety issues or uh, if it becomes more than one time, because your testimony was that this is going to be gone by the time you get your inside permit, right, Walker? That this is just this summer? Uh yes, and it. it, it and it would be nice to use in subsequent years if it was allowed. Um, but I, you know, I do see this as a new thing. It's it's going to be the first business directly on the bike path in the area. So I would not be opposed if you guys wanted <coughs> to, to approve it for the season and see how things go. And then we can revisit again next year to see if it was a good idea. I'm not opposed to that at all, if that, if that helps ease people. That seems like that would answer most of the questions. I think, I think it's fundamentally a good idea, and I think in some ways we're we're inventing problems that aren't there yet. And I think okay. we try it for, I would approve trying it for a year, 
and if and see how it goes and come back. I think that sounds like a good idea. So, John, you want to make somebody want to make a motion? Then I'll make that motion. We are approving it for a year. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Need a second. I'll second. Okay, second by and, Randy Bruce. And that then gives us. Can I also amend the motion to say that um, if there are safety concerns, that then it would come. Uh, back before us. I'm not sure how to write that as a motion or to trigger it, um, but that would be to Jen's concerns about a more kind of heft to the uh, fencing uh, for um, security reasons. I don't know, Daphne or Abby, if you have a way to write that, that gives us, because it's not really a safety issue that the police or the code inspector would look at. It's really just a, a zoning issue. Um, I'm not sure how to I think that we, you know, we're making the zoning proposal and if something happens, then it's up to safety and other people to come back and deal with it because we're, we're not giving them carte blanche to be unsafe. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure it needs that extra stuff in there. Okay. I think too, like we always have the city's nuisance ordinance to fall back on. So if there is a, a safety concern, um, we, we would probably you know, send out our code compliance inspector to take a look and see if he sees anything. And we could probably rely on the nuisance ordinance ordinance to solve anything that would come up at that point. Does that sound okay to you, Kurt? Yeah. And okay. I, I, we know the applicant, he wants to build a nice quality product, but it's not really a permanent uh, outdoor seating. Um, so we just want to make sure that it's not permanently approved. There are a lot of um, mm -hmm. examples of sidewalk cafe barriers. I know like if you walk down State Street, you'll see 20 different types. And so, you know, if this does become a more permanent thing going forward in future years, that might be something to take a look at. Yeah. Anyways, the motion is just for one year, so. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Okay, any further questions or comments? Okay, all those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes unanimously. All right. So we are on to the next item now, which is a sign variance. This is different from 10-22-19, Capital Middleton Springs, 25 or A2540 Allen Boulevard. So it is, uh, there was, okay. Yeah, so Abby, you want to talk about it? There were some issues which needed to be addressed at the Daphne, time. Daphne wrote the report for this Okay, one. Daphne, go ahead. Yeah, sure. So um, yeah, back about two years ago or one and a half years ago, um, they were proposing a sign that would be, I think like shifted up a little um, and their variance was for the height because um, the height of the monument was about 14 feet and it was a lot taller than what's normally allowed. Um, so that was why they were there. Um, and then during the conversation, um, we had found that you know, the sign was crossing some easements and they were providing electricity. So those were the two main concerns, I believe, from that meeting. Um, so now the applicants are back um, and they're basically moving the sign from this location, which is kind of right in front of the Dollar Tree on Middleton Springs. And it's going to be moved into this kind of parking lot space. And so it's taking up three spots um, of space and there's gonna be bollards put in place and landscaping um, to kind of create a buffer in that area. Okay, I guess, so they, they took it out the objections which we had, looks like it. Okay, questions or comments from the commissioners? Randy and Kurt. Okay, so, hands. well, let's start with uh, Randy and then Kurt Paulson. Is there a, is there a, a more detailed site plan or landscape plan that shows how that would kind of uh, be, be set into the, uh, there you go. My only question was, uh, is engineering comfortable with that level of 
just the bollards. Um, I don't think we usually have monument signs in a middle of a drive. I mean, it's taking up a few spots. It's not in a drive aisle, but my only worry is that someone not really paying attention could hit the sign. Um, yeah, so I spoke to um, Sean Stowski about it, and his main concern was still just um, getting electricity to the sign. I don't think he had any um, real issues with the placement of it. And the electricity it will be it will be lighted. Yeah, so it will be lighted, um, and it's going to be coming from the building, and so it's not crossing any easements. So I think it is also part of that aspect of it. This is Josh with Capital Real Estate, and I just wanted to um, speak on that for a second. Um, so what we're actually doing is the sign, the existing monument sign, uh, the power is pulled from one of the pole lights in the parking lot. So what we're going to be doing is we're going to be disconnecting the power at the pole, abandoning the conduit underground to the existing sign, and we'll be pulling the wires back. So then the power for the new sign is going to be pulled from that same light pole um, which is just below it in the parking lot there. Um, so that way we are completely out of, um, the city's utility easement, and then we will remove the existing monument sign completely, um, so that that can be landscaped and everything and mowed at that point. Okay. Well, you took care of the utility easement concerns and I think uh, yeah and you took care of the electricity issue as well so any further questions or comments from the commissioners yes just John Schaefer I go ahead John I think it's a nice idea but you know I've been in this parking lot and there's absolutely never found a reason to drive in that little strip along the road rather than having people go around this is there not a reason why you moved it a little closer to the property line and simply bisected into that driveway in the bottom. There's no exit ramps out of there. So there's there's not a whole lot of reason to keep it that far in. And I'm just wondering what your thoughts are. We just thought it was best to keep the drive aisle open and then um, take up a little bit of um, the cross hatched uh, parking area in, in three stalls. You know, that way if people do wanna use that drive aisle, it, it, it is open and they don't have to veer around it. That was kind of our thoughts on that. Yeah. Okay, I mean, that's fine. I don't mind it. We just get your sign out a little further to the street, but. No, than, I appreciate that. Uh, I have no issue with this as, as where it is, but. The next one is, um, John, you are done? I'm done. Okay, that's Randy Bruce. Uh, I was not um, on the commission when this was before you before. Um, and I was just wondering what the discussion was related to the the size of the sign and the height of the sign related to the the sign ordinance and how much of a variance were were uh, giving them was were, was everyone comfortable with with that aspect of it? And I guess Kurt, you were there, I think. Yeah. We at that time, the major concern was that it was in the easement and there was some electricity concern from our uh, public works department. I don't know if we looked at the size details or not. I, I, don't, I don't remember. Abby, do you remember that? I don't remember. I was just trying to pull up the minutes from the meeting really quick. I, I do remember that, um, right? It was the concern that the height might not be a problem if it was in the same location that the current sign is, but then the engineering department told us that that current sign has the problem with the utility easement. So I think the issue was then uh, to, to move it, but now that I see it, I do wonder about the height in that location um, so maybe Daphne could tell us what's the what's the extent of the variance of the height that we're giving, and what what does the height code tell us, and and how much of a variance is this? Right. So for monument signs, I believe the the tallest height in this location should be ten feet. Um, this is going to be thirteen and a half. 
um, last time they were here, they were at 14, so they did shrink the sign about half a foot um, since last time, um, but it is about, it is three, three and a half feet taller than what it's normally. And I think it must be this perspective drawing because that tree on the boulevard, for reference, is clearly 30 some feet tall. So this um, probably looks bigger on this perspective drawing than it really is. If it's only 13 feet tall, um, how much? Is, how tall is the existing sign? John, that's Abby or anybody knows. So Kurt, if I stand there and you stand on my shoulders, it's about a foot higher than us. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but that tree is much taller than 13. Look in that picture. <laughs> That tree is much taller than 13 feet, but in the picture, this makes the sign look bigger than that tree. What's the height of the existing sign? I don't know the height of the existing sign, but I, I don't want to jump over Randy because I know he has his hand raised too, but yeah. I did find yeah. the minutes for the meeting. Would you like me to share what I found in the minutes? No. Randy, go ahead after, after this. No, no I've, I've spoke all, all I wanted to speak right now. Oh, okay. okay. So um, in the minutes from the 10 19 meeting, um, it mentions what Daphne just stated, which is that um, they were requesting a sign variance for a 14 foot tall sign measuring 70.5 square feet. Um, I'm hearing some background noise. Can everyone who isn't on the committee, please um, mute yourself? Thank you. And then it states that um, a ground sign at this location shall not exceed 10 feet and a maximum area of 64 square feet. There was a public hearing that was held. Um, Josh Anderson from Capital Real Estate and Mike Studnicka with the sign company spoke. No one else registered comments during that meeting. Um, Mark Opitz stated that the city engineer advises against allowing standard electrical wiring within the city's utility easement that runs along Allen Boulevard, although he is amenable to the operation of a low voltage 12 VDC conductor. And then at that point, um, Studnicka with the sign company said the power source would come from the building, not the road, and that even a 12 volt system would require running power to a service box installed outside the easement, but within about 20 feet of the sign. At that point, commission members discussed the sign size, illumination, the need to avoid encroachment into any vision triangle, the concern by and whether there is a hardship that would justify granting the sign variance. And then the item was deferred unanimously. I didn't find any specific um, language. I'm sure if I went back and watched the video, there's probably some more specific language about concerns, but there was concern, it sounds like, about whether there was a hardship. I would say considering how large this area is, how many businesses are there, I think that, uh, Having this sign probably is justified, but I like to hear from others. There are so many businesses, and uh, you know we want to provide them all the visibilities which we can. Any comment from the other commissioners? I, I, mm -hmm. The height is less of a concern to me because it's pulled back further off the street. Yeah. yeah. So I, I don't really have a, I don't have an issue with, with the height because of that. It, it, it might be a little bit too tall if it was in the exact same place, but it's pulled off the street. So I'm fine with it. Okay. All right. Then we need a motion to prove. I would make that motion. Okay. Need a second. Shay for seconds. Okay. Any further questions or comments? Okay. All those are the four. In favor of the motion to approve, say aye. 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 Anyone opposed? So the motion passes. I, I think uh, we want this area to succeed. Well, any further? We don't, that was the last item, right? Yep. <laughs> That's correct. Well, 
Uh, I, I don't know how is the weather like there in California. And it's pretty nice here. So, and mm -hmm. I know Kurt has to go to the football game. So, need a motion to adjourn unless you got some other thing to share. No, I think we should sit here for another hour and a half. <laughs> I move we adjourn. Okay. Second. Okay. All those in favor of the motion say aye. 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 Okay. Hi, All right. Thank yeah, you. Have a wonderful evening. <laughs>